Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Uh, good morning, guys. I hope you're doing great. Good morning, my lovely and cute students. Uh, this is Mr. Ahmed Ali, your biology teacher, and I hope you're enjoying, you're enjoying your uh, vacation. I'm sure that you're already enjoying your vacation, I know. Uh, because, our, uh, because of our new circumstances, uh, inshallah, I'm gonna uh, explain for you uh, today, uh, lesson two, in chapter 14, uh, with a topic uh, named community interaction. Uh, community interactions, I'm sure that many of you or all of you have a, a previous uh, idea or previous knowledge about uh, what we are going to talk about today. Uh, so let's start and do not waste our uh, time. Uh, the first thing you must know about this uh, uh, topic today, uh, uh, a scientific term uh, called uh, or named uh, competition. I think, and all of you uh, know what's meant by competition, just to uh, uh, remember with me the meaning of competition, the competition uh, 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 term means uh, when two organisms uh, fight for the same limited resources in the same area or in a specific area. But the new thing here or the new information uh, uh, here you must know that we have two types of, uh, of competition. The first type is called or named interspecific competition. And the second type called intraspecific competition. Intraspecific and interspecific. I know that you already studied uh, before in the first term what's the difference between enter and intra. The word enter means that the competition between two different species. So enter means two different species. For example, the competition between two different types of plants for resources and water and nutrients in an area, like grass and dandelions, for example. They are different species, two different species. So the competition between them called interspecific competition. The second type of competition named intra, intraspecific competition and the word intra means that it happens between the members of the same species. For example, a certain type or uh, certain members of a specific type of birds. They are competing between each other for the food resources for mating, for example, and etc. So, the first thing you must know, the meaning of competition and it has two types, enter specific competition and the second type, intraspecific. Interspecific between two different species, intraspecific between the same species. The second scientific term you must know, or we are talking about community interaction, so we are moving ahead to the most important and one of the uh, important uh, 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 interactions in uh, wildlife or between organisms the meaning or the uh, uh, the term predation all of you i'm sure if you look at the the <coughs> the, uh, the figure here you can realize that the snake is already uh, uh, predating on uh, a mouse here. So the word predation means that uh, the process by which one organism capture or prey and feed upon another organism. Another organism. You must know here that predation is happening or occurs between two uh, uh, different organisms. The one which feed on the other, the one which capture named the predator.
while the other one that is already eaten by the predator is called prey. So these are the, uh, uh, the two different risks uh, included in this relationship which is called predation. Okay, be careful. Be careful because there will be a, a, a thinking question at the end of this lesson uh, related to predation, okay? The most characteristic uh, related to uh, predation is that the predator kill and hunt the prey quickly, okay? This is it. So, competition, predation. Let's move to the second uh, uh, type of relationships, okay? Here in this part, he's giving you examples about uh, uh, predation between different organisms and animals, okay? I think all of you know all these things, but the new thing or the new that I want you to focus on it, that herbivore, herbivores, herbivores, you know, herbivores means the uh, uh, organisms that feed on, on what? On plants or meat or plants and meat. Yes, herbivores, as we studied before in the previous chapter, means organisms that feed on plants. Herbivores here also considered to be predators. You know why? Why? Because they already preying on plants. So there's, uh, there is a predator and also there is a prey, which is the plant. For example, deer is feeding on grass, so the deer here is the predator, while the grass here is the prey. So herbivores, guys, if it comes in true or false question, herbivores are considered to be predators, true or false, what you're going to say, it's true, yes, okay? So this is uh, what's, related, what's related to the uh, uh, predation. The second type of interactions between organisms is called or named symbiosis. Symbiosis, I don't know if uh, all of you know or faced or studied this word before, but we will explain this. What's meant by symbiosis? Symbiosis is a close ecological relationship between two or more organisms of different species that live in direct contact with one another. So be careful, symbiosis is a relationship between two different organisms, but they must live in direct contact with one another. There are three types of symbiosis. Okay, we are going to explain them right now. You must know them, by the way, they are uh, 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 very important, especially in sad questions, by the way. The first type of symbiosis, it has three uh, uh, major types. Number one, as follow, symbiosis. Number one, mutualism. This is number one. Number two, commensalism. And the last type named parasitism. Okay, parasitism, mutualism, commensalism. What's the difference between them? Quickly, mutualism is an interspecific. Interspecific, not intra, because it happens between two different types of organisms, not the same species, okay? Interaction in which both organisms, both organisms benefit from one another. This is the key answer for the word mutualism. Two organisms get benefit or get benefit from each other. Let's give a quick example. The quick example, uh, the relation between bat and Cactus plant. plant. Pet and cactus plant. What's happening here? The pet helps the cactus uh, in pollination. 
transfer pollens from one plant to another, from one cactus plant to another one. So it helping the plant in pollination. What's the benefit that cactus will give to the plant? That <coughs> sorry. Uh, uh, the pet will the pet will feed on the fruits produced by the plant and also helping the plant to spread to spread the seeds from one place to another helping the plant to uh, spread in uh, a large area this is the first uh, uh, type of symbiotic relationships the second type is called commensalism you must know only here to be uh, obvious and to be clear uh, guys you just uh, just <coughs> understand the meaning and one example two examples maximum okay about each type the second type is commensalism what's meant by commensalism commensalism is a relationship between two organisms in which focus please one receive an ecological benefit from uh, the other one while the second one neither benefit nor is harmed so in this relationship the commensal is only one gets benefit while the other one neither benefits nor is harmed the most famous example about this type is that <clears throat> you will be surprised by this example you will be surprised okay the most famous example is uh, uh, the relation between shark between shark example sharks and a type of fish called remora remora fish shark is not benefit here or, uh, uh, doesn't get benefits or even harmed but the only one who gets benefit here is the remora it feeds on the remaining <coughs> of the shark food <coughs> the second type or the second example here about commensalism is explained sorry is explained in the coming page or in the next figure in this page here commensalism is explained in this uh, figure imagine that there are tiny organisms that live on your skin specifically in your eyelashes they are considered to be the home of tiny types of mites by the way this picture is a real picture magnified by the microscope these mites are named demo demo dices demo dices they live a type of mites live in your eyelashes and they feed on the oil secretions and dead skin without harming you they only feed on they only feed on your secretions and dead skin in your eyelashes so the human here did you get harm no did you get a benefit no the mites did they get benefit yes so this type of relationship is called or named commensalism the third type the third type let's move back to the previous uh, page the third type of symbiosis is parasitism and all of you i know that what's meant by parasitism parasitism is a bad relation unfortunately between uh, uh, two types of organisms in this relationship the parasitism is a type of symbiotic relationship okay 
similar to predation. Okay, here one organism benefits while the other is harmed. The one who gets uh, which get gets benefit named the parasite, while the other one which is harm named host. So here parasite benefits while the host harm. Okay, so here parasitism is a relationship similar to predation. Why, in your opinion? Why do you think it's similar? That's right, because one gets benefit while the other one is harmed. Okay, so there's a similarity between parasitism and predation. This is the similarity. Okay, but unlike predation, this is the difference between both of them. Which in predation, the predator will quickly kill or kills, uh, he quickly kills and eat its prey. But in case of parasitism, the parasite gets benefit by keeping its host alive for days or even years. Why? Because they need to get uh, or have a source of food for a long time to keep or to stay alive. This is the similarity and the difference between parasitism and predation, okay? Uh, the last thing here is giving you an example about the parasitism. The example is the relationship between the wasps and caterpillar. Imagine, by the way, this is a real image. The wasp put uh, uh, its eggs in inside the caterpillar's body imagine and after maturity the larvae starts to feed or eat or get food by eating the caterpillars from inside out imagine so one gets benefit which is the wasp while another one gets harm which is the caterpillar this relationship is called or named Named what? Commensalism? Yes, named parasitism. This is it. This is it. So quickly, uh, at last, uh, uh, we are going to finish the last part of this lesson just to uh, uh, understand something related to parasitism. There are two types of parasitism or parasites. The first type is called ectoparasite. And the second, this is type number one. The second type named or called, called what? End, endoparasites. Ecto means outside the body. Ecto means that the parasite lives and get its a benefit from for example attaching to the host or the outside of the body and usually feed on its fluid let's think about some examples for examples in your opinion we can say mosquitoes we can say ticks we can say leeches all these things are considered to be ecto or endo ecto why because they live, live outside the body of the host. The second type of parasitism is called endoparasites. Endo means inside. One lives outside, which is called ictu, while the endo means living inside the host. What are the examples? What are the examples? The examples like hook hook worms, like tape worms inside the digestive uh, system or in the digestive system and they usually feed on the food that hosts already feeding or eating on. This is the 
uh, our lesson for today, uh, the uh, community interaction. And I just want to uh, uh, make a quick summarize, uh, summary with you. This is a quick summary for what we have started uh, today, the meaning of competition. Number two, uh, that you must know that competition uh, uh, happens between two different, uh, 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 has two different types. The first type called interspecific, uh, which happens between the same type of species. The second type, interspecific, between two different species. The second thing, or the uh, uh, first type of relationship, which is called predation, and we know that one organism feeds on uh, another one between predator and a prey. And we have the second type of uh, interactions named symbiosis. Symbiosis has uh, or uh, really uh, has three types of uh, uh, relationships. Number one, mutualism. In this type, one, uh, both of them gets benefit from each other. The example, for example, a bee and a flower. The second type, commensalism. In this type of relationship, one gets benefit and the other one neither gets benefit or harm. The example about this are more fish and a shark. The last type of uh, these relationships or of symbiosis is parasitism, which is a relationship in which one organism benefit while the other one is harmed. The two types of paras parasites are ectoparasites and endoparasites. One lives outside and one inside. And these are the examples of both of them. Of them, I'm giving you a, a, a question uh, at last to think about its answer. And I'm ready. Uh, no, I'm sure that you uh, will get the answer uh, quickly. Uh, the last thing, I'm gonna let you watch uh, a video about uh, parasitism. Enjoy it. Enjoy the video guys and have a nice day. Here in the southeastern United States, these besieged plants have actually sent up a chemical mist and SOS to these black wasps. Why? Because black wasps are known as aphid killers and some aphids are busily sucking the life out of these plants. Now, despite its nickname, this wasp isn't here merely to kill the aphids. No, that would be too easy. Like a character in a James Bond movie, the wasp has a more exquisite punishment for the aphid. With a clinical precision, the wasp injects a single egg into each aphid's body. This means a slow death for the aphid as the wasp egg grows inside it. Each wasp can plant eggs in 200 aphids. The aphids send out their own chemical alarm systems and the colony panics. But it's too late. The wasp has done its work. Hasta la vista, baby. And we mean baby. The aphids face a gruesome death. The ravenous wasp larva will eat the aphid alive from the inside out. The aphid's body becomes the incubator for the young of its predator. A new generation of assassins will soon emerge, littering these killing fields with corpses. Okay, now here's the money shot. The young wasp emerging to seek out more aphids to begin this cycle all over again. The wasp, with its exquisitely deathly plan, and yet, just doing what nature's programmed it to do. Thank you guys and have a nice day.